button now. Um, hey guys, thanks all once again for joining. Uh, good to see you all. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely to see you. Um, and thank you, Sharon, as always, for reminding me to record. <laughs> uh, right, let's get started, okay. Uh, Joshua, good to see you. Thank you for joining. Uh, Kelvin is still trying to join, I think, okay. Param, it's good to see you. Thanks for joining, it's awesome. All right, Hi, uh, hey, hey, hey. Hi, everyone. Okay, uh, John, AKA JP, will uh, lead us in time of worship. Uh, and yeah, we'll get started. Over to you, JP. Oh, wait, I have to right. share the lyrics, right? Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, good to see everyone. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Let's look to God. Father, we thank you for this time you have given us to come before you to seek your face, Lord. We pray that you will bless this time of fellowship, you will bless this time of worship and the word. We pray that you'll speak to us so clearly, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Over all the earth, you reign on high. Every mountain stream, every sunset sky, but my one request, Lord, my only aim, is that you reign in me again. Let's sing it out to him. Over all the earth, you reign on high. Every mountain stream, every sunset sky, but my one request, Lord, my only aim is that you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour. God, you reign over us, over every thought, over every word of God. Let your presence reign over us, God. Over every thought, over every word, may my life reflect the beauty of my Lord, because you mean more to me than any earthly thing so won't you reign in me again let me sing that again yeah over every thought over every word may my life reflect the beauty of my Lord cause you mean more to me than any earthly thing So this is 
prayer tonight that you reign over us God over every thought over every word that we speak oh God let your presence reign over us God mm, reign over me God can we sing that chorus one more time Lord reign in me reign My darkest hour, you are the Lord of all I am. So won't you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour. that Jesus Christ who is the wisdom and knowledge of God he dwells in us he is full of wisdom and knowledge and when he starts dwelling in us and he leads us in that way of wisdom and knowledge and we also read in Daniel chapter 6 that God filled Daniel with a spirit of excellence a sense in my spirit and I want to declare this word this word over all of us that God will release his wisdom and his knowledge his excellent spirit over a, over each one of us during the time when we need to take decisions his word speaks to us even as he reigns in us over every thought and over every word let the, let the voice of the Lord be heard in our ears. Let the voice of the Lord be heard in our ears. Yes, Lord, you reign over us, God. You reign over us, Jesus. You reign over us, God. And you prepare us, God, to host your presence. Lord, prepare me. Be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Can we sing it out? Lord, prepare me, be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and Tried and true with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. One more time, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy. Tried and true with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you, sanctuary for you. Wait on you, God. Now wait for you. I'll wait for you through the storm and through the night. I will wait for you. Surely wait for you. For your love is my delight. I will wait for you. I will. Through 
rely. I will wait for you, surely wait for you, till my soul is satisfied. Father, we ask you to fill us, fill our hearts with your presence right now. As Lord, we wait on you. On your word, we will rely, God. Even as we learn about character today, God, we pray that you will prepare our hearts to receive your word. Yes, Lord, we will wait for you. Can we sing that chorus one last time? I will wait for you. I will wait for you. On your word, I will rely. I will wait for you. Surely wait for you till my soul is satisfied. One last time, I will wait for you. I will wait for you on your word. I will rely. I will wait for you. Surely wait for you till my soul is satisfied. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father, we just want to thank you for who you are and what you do in our lives. Young people, can we just take a minute and uh, and just to wait on him? I think this verse that we know so uh, very well uh, in Isaiah chapter forty. Uh, do you not know, or have you not heard, that the Lord is the everlasting God? And you know the rest of the passage and what it goes on to say. One, when someone was reading the scripture today uh, in Bible college, and uh, this verse, uh, you know, particularly stood out, the youth will grow weary. Uh, it's, not, it's not saying youth may grow weary or you know faint. It says so. There will come a time in life where we will feel weary and weak and tired as young people, as young people. Uh, but those who wait on the Lord. Um, it's like we are a generation that doesn't understand what waiting is. Uh, we want microwave results in everything. But, uh, and that's, and there's another scripture I am reminded of in Isaiah chapter 64. Uh, Verse 4, Isaiah chapter 64, verse 4, you can turn if you want to, it's okay. It says, for since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you, who acts for the one who waits for him. Uh, the Amplified Version says he acts and he is working on, on behalf of the one who is gladly waiting on him. Uh, we're going a little bit in a different direction, but, but as young people, I want to encourage us to wait on him and, uh, and just find out what it means to wait on the Lord. Amen. Thank you, JP, for leading us in the beautiful time of worship. Uh, let's just continue to wait on the Lord through this session, okay? Uh, I wanna thank you all for joining. Um, hope you guys are all doing well. Um, thank you for taking the time off on a Friday evening, as I always say, uh, to make time for the one who made time, amen. Uh, let's honor him today. Um, so today I wanna just start on, uh, a series called Character. Series called 
character. Um, I just felt the need because it's not because I have figured out everything about this topic. Uh, it's not because, uh, you know, I have lived a life of character and whatnot, but then, and I want you to know that before I speak to you, uh, I'm speaking this to myself because there were certain things that God were pointing out in my life. Um, you know, and I felt like I just wanted to share and uh, teach. So maybe if it's helping me in my journey, uh, you know, as I you know continue to mature in the Lord, I, it might help some of us. Okay. Um, so uh, helping me today is Pastor Sam Matthews, all the way from a country called Jainagar, uh, <laughs> uh, who's going to be helping me out with, um, with the PPT. So uh, thanks, Sam. So are, are you guys uh, ready to learn? about character and honor today? Come on, somebody who's ready say, give me a big yup. Say yup for myself, so. <laughs> awesome, let's get started, okay? Because I think we, we have quite a, few ground to cover. Okay. Um, so it, it, it starts off with this basis. Who are you when no one else is watching? Okay. Who are you when no one else is watching? Okay. Most often we are concerned about our reputation, right? Uh, reputation is what others think you are. Character is what, who God knows you are. Okay, reputation is what, I mean, you're worried about what others think of you. Oh, what will this person think? What will that person think if, I, if they get to know about this and whatnot? Uh, and so we put on a mask, okay? Uh, so to hide that, your character, your true character, you put on a mask and you start playing different characters, okay? I should also mention that this series is uh, inspired by a youth conference topic called On the Road to Demaskers. Okay, um, as soon as you put on a mask, you are playing a different character, aren't, isn't it, right? Um, but that's what it is, um, you know, to hide um, our actual original character because we are concerned about our reputation, we put on a mask and we start playing different characters, okay? But God knows who you really are. Okay, so in this series, I want to be talking about um, honor, purity, loyalty, integrity, and gratitude. Okay, this we will cover this week after week. So today we'll discuss about honor, and uh, yeah, we we'll see how that goes. Okay, um, it's very important, and I've I'm, I've heard a lot of you know uh, people in ministry, uh, pastors, teachers share this particular line. Uh, over and over is that anointing will take you up, but it's your character that will keep you up there. Okay, you are anointed to serve, anointed as a worship leader, anointed as a leader, anointed, uh, you know, in the prophetic ministry, in the healing ministry, etc., uh, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, you are anointed, you can all get anointed very easily. Uh, but it is your character that will keep you up there, okay? Um, anointing is like this signet ring that, you know, God puts on to a king. In the Bible, we see that he anointed kings, right? It, it's a symbol. And it just takes that, that, you know, that instant for God to remove that ring of the king because of the character. And immediately what comes to your mind, at least to me, is Saul. Right? So just keep this in mind, anointing will take you up, but it's your character that will keep you up there. Okay, so let's get started. You tell me what comes to your mind uh, when you think of honor. So today we will look at honor, which is one of the attributes a core necessary in developing a character, becoming a person of character, a man or a woman of character. So what comes to your mind when you think of honor? Okay, respect, all right, speak to me guys. Privilege, 
So being obedient, awesome. Okay. Honor, 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 honor. Come on. A soldier being respected by a country. Yeah. Have you seen this movie called uh... Yeah, youth pastor suggesting movies. <laughs> but have you seen this movie called Taking Chance? Uh, if you haven't, you should. Uh, it's, it's such a beautiful movie on honor. And it's the whole movie is about honoring a soldier. Um, it's a very clean movie. Uh, I, I'd recommend that. Okay, so you should watch it. It's such a beautiful movie. Okay, yeah, okay, go on. So what else comes to our mind when we think of honor? Come on, come on, come on, speak to me. How do you honor someone when they dishonor you is what comes to my mind. Mm. How do you honor someone when they dishonor you? Yeah, thank you, Para. Okay, I hope you guys are thinking. Uh, so as, as I want you to keep thinking about it because I think it's one of those words which we, we know it is, it's very easy and simple to use it in a sentence or a statement uh, or as an idea. Uh, or we know the theory behind it, but it's so profound uh, that sometimes we lose the sight, you know, of the weight of it. Okay, so uh, there are a few definitions, uh, you know, as all as always. Uh, if if you're going to study on a word, I start off with going to Merriam-Webster, okay, uh, dictionary, and see what it says. Okay, so this is what these are a few definitions of honor. Um, as a noun, it means uh, the state of being morally upright, honest, noble, virtuous, and magnanimous. Uh, I have to go and see what that word means, but I just put it up there. <laughs> Excellence of character, the perception of such a state, favorable reputation, dignity, a token of praise or respect, something that represents praiseworthiness. Honor is something that represents praiseworthiness or respect, such as a prize or reward given by the state to a citizen. Faithfulness to uh, high moral standards, okay? All right, thanks, Sam. Let's go to the next slide and see what it says, okay? Definition of honor as a verb. To think highly of, or to think of highly, to respect highly, to show respect for, to recognize the importance, okay? Uh, with your mics muted, just say that with me, okay? To recognize the importance, okay? One more time. To recognize the importance or spiritual value of, to conform to, abide by, act in accordance with an agreement, treaty, promise, request, or the like. So when we say that we honor God uh, and, and in our actions, we, sh we should show that we are in agreement with his word, his promise, and his commands, isn't it? Okay, so that's just an interesting definition of what uh, the honor is, what the dictionary, um, the, the thesaurus has to say. But the Hebrew definition, we have to get to that, isn't it? We have to go, uh, and see what the root word of honor is in the Hebrew, okay? Because we're gonna be looking at a bunch of scriptures uh, that is used in the scriptures, in, where honor is used in the scriptures, okay? So it comes from the word kabad. It's very close to the word, similar word used for glory, which is kabod, K-A-B-O-D is the word used for kabod and kabad is used for, uh, you know, honor. And it comes from a very similar root word, which means to be heavy or weighty and glorious, okay? To be heavy or weight, something that carries weight, uh, you know, it has a value 
praiseworthiness, okay? So that's what the Hebrew definition of it is. Okay, so it's like the concept of um, something or someone that cannot be ignored. Okay, let's just take, for example, I mean, you're walking, you're going, you know, you're going in the, in the road, you're walking the road, uh, you see like a big bulldozer or a, a huge crane. Okay, something that's just, it, it's, the, it's the exact opposite of neglect. You just cannot pass it by. Uh, you know, so something that, you know, you can just feel the presence of it. Um, and that's what, you know, the concept of this meaning of, uh, you know, honor really is. Okay. Um, so another question to you is, is, do you think honor is a difficult character quality to develop? What do you think? The I in the question is you. <laughs> What do you think? Do you think honor is a difficult character quality to develop? Yeah, it is. Okay, thank you. And uh, why, why is it a difficult character to develop? Because not everyone abides with your opinions or they don't really agree with you to kind of respect you okay all right thanks Anika. thanks for sharing that okay what else guys anybody else yes it is since we need the grace of god to do so especially when we are hurt mm, yeah yeah Yeah. And I'm again reminded of what Param shared, you know, it's how do you honor someone uh, when they dishonor you? Mm. Okay. What else? Uh, anybody else? It is not easy, but with God's help, we can. Amen. Amen. There are not a lot of people, so I can ask, right? Okay, uh, so yeah, I mean, I think we've established with uh, most of our silences and some of the, you know, uh, responses is that, yeah, it is, it can be a difficult uh, character quality to develop. Uh, and, and and the reasons and excuses can seem genuine. Um, and uh, yeah, JP is saying uh, not very easy because sometimes we are too judgmental. Mm. Amen to that, brother. Okay, so let's just start off by asking this question. Oh, you know, uh, just addressing a couple of these questions. Okay, um, so we looked at what we think about it. I mean, we responded by saying, yes, it is difficult, but let's see what God says about it, okay? So first point, just wanna share a few points here with us is we start by learning to honor ourselves, okay? We start by learning to honor ourselves. What do I mean by that? Let's go to the next slide. So we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20 says, you were brought, you were bought with a, a price, therefore honor God with your body. You were bought with a price. Okay, you should say that in line with me. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. What do you think it means to honor God with your body? Speak to me. Let's stay on that slide, Sam. Thanks. Feel free to unmute your mic and just speak to me. What do you mean? What do you think it means to honor God with your body? Because we've read this scripture so many times, we seem to understand the theory behind it, but what does it really mean? Okay. 
to use our hands and feet for him, okay? okay. Can you think of a couple of those uh, definitions that we uh, just looked some time ago? Um, to think highly of, to respect highly, uh, being morally upright with your body, being honest with your body, to yourself. Um, yeah. To be pure and holy in our heart, purity. Okay. Come on, anybody else? There is no right or wrong answer, guys, because I am not even going to give you an answer to that question. It's just a question. Okay. I want you to think and tell me taking care of your body because it is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Mm. living a healthy christian life as our body is the temple of the holy spirit yeah uh in, during the time of worship we sang uh, lord prepare me to be a sanctuary okay in exodus chapter 25 god says uh make this people build me a sanctuary it's not there Sam. <laughs> okay, build me a sanctuary and so that I will come and dwell among them. Okay, um, and then in John chapter 1, verse 14, uh, one, that whole chapter basically it says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. That word dwelt basically means tabernacled. In other words, he, he, he built a sanctuary, he made himself a sanctuary among us. Our intimacy begins in the sanctuary okay, because that's where he manifests himself um, intimacy of knowing who we are and who he is begins in that uh, in the sanctuary okay so this is a question and i want i want you to think about it uh, you know every day of your life what it is to honor god with your body because you need to learn to honor yourself first before going to the next point which is, uh, Sam, you can go to the next slide, yeah. Honor one another. Okay, so if you don't understand the concept of honoring your body, yourself, if you don't understand your worth because you were bought with a price, you are not going to understand the worth of another person, your neighbor, your friend, your colleague. You are not going to understand that. Okay, so the first step is understand what your worth is. Uh, learn to honor yourself. And then we see honor one another. I am muted, sorry. The scripture that I've used there is Romans chapter 12, verse 10. Romans chapter 12, verse 10 says, be devoted or be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourself. Mm. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love and honor one another above yourself. Look, as I was preparing for tonight's session, uh, again, I, this is the foundation of it is, is so simple. Okay, uh, honor or the culture of honor is where you would treat another person as you would Jesus. Sim it's that simple. Okay, should I say that again? A culture of honor or honoring another person is simply the way how you would treat Jesus. And that is how you honor another person. Uh, and Ephesians 5.21, uh, I think that verse is there, Sam? Yeah, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 says, Submit yourself to one another out of reverence for Christ. And nobody likes to submit. There's something about that word. It makes people very nervous. Submit. Why should I submit? You know, it's like, uh, wives submit yourself to the husband. It's like, why should the wife submit to the husband? Kind of thing. You know, it's like, it's like you know, it, that word kind of makes everybody very, very nervous. So submitting ourselves, humbling ourselves, under the, coming under the supervision or submission for another person. Why? Out of reverence for Christ. Okay, out of reverence for Christ. 
So if we understand this concept and ask the Holy Spirit to help us in this, especially, we will realize that a person or anybody doesn't have to earn your honor. You are honoring them out of reverence for Christ. Honoring another person is not based on what they have done and what their worth is. You honor them out of reverence for Christ. I'm not saying this. This is what Ephesians 5.21 is saying. Are you guys with me so far? Yeah. Yes, no, maybe. Just... Okay. Um, a huge, uh, just a just couple more mid points on the previous point, uh, you know, how we honor uh, another person, one another is I think, uh, or should I ask, uh, how do we dishonor another person? What are some of the actions that we can commit that will dishonor another person? Nothing. Disrespect, disobey, yes. Putting someone down, yes. What about gossip? Treating someone as common. When we consider ourselves superior, wow, okay. Yeah, not giving them their worth. Yeah, pride, condescending attitude. I'm better than everybody else. Yeah, insulting, yeah, bringing them down. Yeah, so there are many ways in, in how we can dishonor another person, isn't it? Um, and so, and we, we, we've established that in our own strength, in our own ability as human beings, as a person, it can be hard. It can be hard to honor someone who dishonors us. It, it's, and it's also very easy to dishonor someone. Um, and imagine the whole world if everybody honored everybody. Okay, forget the world, just the church, okay, <laughs> right? Um, so in this point, let's just ask the Holy Spirit. I mean, in every point, basically, is the Holy Spirit. Help me to honor myself. Help me to honor me as the temple, as your temple, as your sanctuary. Uh, okay. And now understanding your worth, you try, you ask the Holy Spirit to help me to honor those who dishonor me. Help me to submit myself. Help me to submit myself out of reverence for you. Because if I say, I honor you, Jesus, I need to know what it means to honor the other person. Amen. Um, so that's point two. Let's move on uh, to the next point. The topic of honor is incomplete without uh, talking about this, right? Honor your parents. Um, let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. Exodus chapter 20, verse 12 says, honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God is giving. Honor your father and your mother. Okay, so remember, uh, we saw that uh, Hebrew definition of what honor is, right? It's to give weight, uh, is to give uh, praiseworthiness, uh, heaviness, right? Um, so that's, that's, that's the word that's being used here, okay? To give them the, um, the weight that they deserve, yeah? Um, to honor and to, you know, to respect the fact. And this is one of the first commandments uh, with a promise. Honor your father and your mother, followed by the promise so that you may live 
long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Okay, this is not the only scripture. Thank you, Jasmine, for sharing that scripture. And let's go ahead and see a bunch of other scriptures from the Old Testament. Okay, we see that in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 3, it says, Every one of you shall rever his mother and his father and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Deuteronomy 5.16 says, honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you uh, so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land of the Lord your God is giving. Deuteronomy 27.16 says, cursed is the one who treats his father or his mother with contempt and all the people shall say amen. Thanks, Sam. Let's move on. Let's some more scriptures, guys, for us. It's Proverbs 1.8. It says, my son, hear the instruction of your father and do not forsake the law of your mother. Whoever curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in deep darkness. Proverbs 30, 17, the eye that mocks his father and scorns obedience to his mother, the ravens of the valley will pick it out and the young eagles will eat, ouch. Okay, uh, so these are a bunch of scriptures from the Old Testament. Let's see what the New Testament says. For God said, honor thy father and thy mother and let him, let him who reviles his father or mother be certainly put to death. And that word revile there is in the Greek, a means offensive language. Okay, the numbers that you see is just uh, in the concordance and in Septuagint, you can go and check on that. Okay, the word used for that is kakologio. Okay, it means to just address someone with offensive language and treat with disrespect. Okay, so that uh, honor thy father and thy mother and let him who disrespects and uses offensive language uh, against his father or mother be put to death, okay? Uh, see what Ephesians 6, 2 says, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Okay, um, here, so the word Paul is using here is, it's timau. Okay, that's the word he's using. I'm 100% sure that I did not pronounce it right. Uh, it means to estimate of, to fix the value or to river. Okay, so to honor our parents or our neighbors or yourself, ourselves is to have a high estimation of them, to rever them or have a high regard for them so much so that it holds a lot of weight as we know it does before God, okay? So that's um, honoring uh, your parents, okay? Now, I know there is this obvious question that we are not going to answer today, which is, what about parents who don't deserve that? Okay, that's, we'll take an entire half a day for that and we'll discuss on that question, but we're not gonna address that today uh, because uh, of time and what, okay? Um, so let's move on. And the last one is honoring your authority. Okay, first one, what was first one? This quick recap, honor yourself. If you can know your worth, if you know that you've been brought with a, bought with a price, you know your worth. And that will help you in, in seeing others worth. Okay, uh, so you will honor them and then you will, you will uh, learn to honor your parents as the Bible commands and then honor your authority. Um, before we look at a few scriptures in the Bible, um, is honoring authority important? What do you think? Depends on who they are, how they are. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, I mean, I'm not overweighing this point uh, over, you know, the previous points. I'm not doing that, but, um, but I think as young people coming back to that, okay, is especially this generation is, uh, is we need a lot of help in recognizing and honoring authority. Right, um, because we've come so far, Generation X, Y, Z, you know, and don't know what is going to come next. 
it's it's we're in a generation that is used to being want to be independent uh, does not like to be told uh, what to do it's, you know uh, that attitude of condescension uh, i am better i know it all i know everything because uh, i mean I, I just look at my 18 year old self okay and i was like and now i think and in retrospect i was like what a fool i thought i knew everything but mm -mm. Okay, but it's super important, guys. I mean, we need the Holy Spirit in all of these points to honor. Um, a couple of examples before we read a few scriptures is um, we see Samuel in the Bible, Prophet Samuel, First Samuel, Second Samuel. You can read, you know, especially in the First Samuel, in the early chapters, we get a background of, uh, you know, Samuel is under this, uh, the high priest called Eli, uh, you know, and he had two sons. Now, it doesn't speak highly of Eli and, uh, and not at all of his sons. Now, Samuel is there in the temple and he's growing up in the temple from a child because while he was still a child, Hannah, his mother, offered him back to the Lord. So he's growing up in the temple and he's watching all of these things, right? Eli is not, you know, uh, he's not being the perfect leader that he should be uh, and not, neither his sons. And it, it could be very, it should have been very easy for Samuel to go back to his mother and say, I don't like his ways. He's not honoring God. Uh, you know, his ways are not right. But Samuel sticks out. What, the reward of Sam, Samuel just staying back is when God calls Samuel, where does he go? He goes to Eli. He goes to two, three times to Eli. And then who tells him how to respond? Eli tells him, the next time you hear this voice, boy, say, here am I, Lord. It's amazing how God can speak to through those who you think um, does not deserve honor. Okay, that's one of the examples, isn't it? And the other example is, has to be David uh, that I can think of. Um, David, although anointed as king, still not seated on the throne, gets a chance to kill Saul twice. He knows that Saul is after his life, but he says this, I will not touch the Lord's anointed. Man. We, guys, we need to learn that. In touch, in our context, can be to speak against or whatnot, right? Now, my senior pastor, my, my boss, Pastor Ashish Raichur, yeah, I mean, when we have our meetings, team meetings and whatnot, there are, you know, uh, points that I will not deserve, that I will not agree with. It's okay to disagree, but do I dishonor him simply because I disagree? I don't do that, right? Um, so let's just go ahead and read a few scriptures and see what the Bible has to say. Okay, First Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 and 2, it says, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all those in authority that we may live peaceful and quiet lives. Here, this verse is inviting us to intercede for, for our leadership, for our government, kings, okay? Represent the government, authority, okay? Uh, Bible, are you praying for your leaders? Are you praying for your leadership? It's very important. Are you praying for your bosses too? Okay, next verse. Let's see what it says. First Peter chapter two, verse 13 says, submit yourself. Mm, see that word? Submit yourself for the Lord's sake. What was Ephesians 5, 21 said? Submit yourself and honor one another as a reverence to Christ. Here he's saying, submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every human authority, whether to the emperor or the supreme authority, as a supreme authority. Go on, Sam. Thank you. In Romans chapter 13, verse 1 and 2, it says, Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. 
the authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry if it's a, it's like a, it's a, it's a bit heavy on the content side, but I, I really hope uh, that we are getting, you know, it. Um, so honor yourself, first point honor one another. How do you do that? Treat others as you would treat Jesus. Do not participate in gossip. Do not participate or engage in, in, in any conversation that would dishonor another person. Um, and point three is honor your father and your mother. Okay, honor your authority. All right, and finally, in conclusion, what steps will I take? What so we learn all these things. So what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Hebrews 13 18 says, Pray for us. We are sure that we have a clear conscience and we desire to live honorable in every way. Now, if I ask this question to us, or what 23 of us saying, do you desire to live an honorable way? And I'm sure the answer is going to be yes, 100%, right? And here is inviting us to pray, you know, asking your friends to pray for, uphold us in prayer, pray for us. I want to live a honor, an honorable life. So pray for me, okay? Uh, encourage your friends, your families to keep you, uphold you in prayer. You go yourself before God in prayer and express this desire. Father, I desire to live honorable in every way won't you help me and this other psalm uh scriptures in psalm 91 verse 15 says he shall call upon me and i will answer him i will be with him in trouble i will deliver him and honor him wow i will deliver him and i will honor him okay it's it seems like a very different verse uh, you know, in context to what we've read. But you know that word deliver there, okay, deliver, especially there, was used in a very military kind of a sense, okay, when you're waging a war against another nation, they would use a word, uh, I forget the root word of what is used there, okay, to retreat. Everybody in the army would shout that word, and they would retreat. Okay, so God is saying that I, you know, in, in your in, during the time of your trouble, when you feel like you're, you know, getting hit by your enemies left, right, center by life, I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to bring yourself to me. And another translation word says, I will minister to you there. Okay, that's a place. You know, have you seen this? Uh, um, I mean, we've all seen this boxing matches and all, right? But, but people are boxing and then the bell rings okay then you put, both of them goes to another one corner and there's this person who's taking care of him you know and pretty much so that's what's happening there is god saves us and he ministers to us he helps us and not only that and he goes on to say i will honor you um and in this context what god is saying is and back, again, back in those in, in, in the in the ancient times, um, you know, when kings wanted to honor someone, okay, when the kings of the old, when they wanted to honor someone, they would put that heavy robe over that person. Uh, a, you know, not maybe his robe or another robe, okay. They would in and that is the way they would honor him, okay. I mean. I'm sure we've seen in India, South India, India, and all, you know, if, uh, if you want to honor a person, they'll put a shawl. Politicians, you know, or even, you know, uh, okay, whatever Sam is doing, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, anyway, so that's the point. So, you know, God is saying here that he will rescue us and deliver us and he will honor us. He will put a weight of his presence over us. Okay, um, let's go on. Um, Actually, I, I, I don't know how to remove this. Uh, don't worry, Sam. Actually, we've come to the end of it. You can stop the share.
So when God says that he's going to honor us, he's saying that he's got the deepest respect for us. Okay. Um, in conclusion, I just want to say, you know, take some time to pray for one another, to, uh, to live an honorable life. Okay. Um, we honor God in the smallest of the things, um, in so many ways. When we say, uh, sick, for example, Sunday, we've sung, Lord, I honor you. I worship you. I honor you. I, I mean, I glorify your name and whatnot. And then you come back Monday to Saturday. When you say no to the things that, that, you know, that kind of tempts you. Okay. When you say, no, I'm not going to watch, go to that website. When you say, no, I'm not going to participate in gossip. When you say no to the things that are not of God, you are saying you matter to me, you love me, so I'm going to show my deepest respect to you. Okay, when, uh, I don't know, as a husband, if there's another woman that comes and tries to flirt with me and whatnot, I'm saying, sorry, uh, you know, I love my wife. I'm showing my deepest, my utmost respect, my, the heaviness, I'm putting the weight, say, on my wife, you know, saying she matters. She cannot be neglected. Uh, she cannot be ignored, okay? Uh, and same thing with your parents. Uh, you know, when you can constantly ask yourself, uh, you know, am I ignoring them deliberately? And whatnot, so. Um, I hope some of it, something of it made sense, uh, you know, to, to you all. Honor, to be known as a person of honor, uh, is huge to be also known as a person of character. Okay, if you can be a person of honor, you will be known as a person of character. Anointing will take you up, but it's your character that's going to keep you up there. Amen. Uh, I'll share a PDF document and where I have a bunch of questions for self-reflection, uh, you know, for, for you guys, that you can, you know, ask yourself and, uh, you know, pray about it and ask the Holy Spirit to help you in this journey, in this walk um, of life. Amen. Can we pray? Yeah. Father, we come before your throne of grace right now, Lord. Jesus, we, in with one heart, we come before you. We know that you've anointed all of us in so many different ways and so many gifts, Father. And what we desire right now is that we would live a life of honor, Father. A life that is pleasing to you, God. Help us to honor you with our lives by honoring people around us. Holy Spirit, help us to see, open our eyes to what it means to honor ourselves, honor one another, honor our parents, honor our neighbors, honor authority. We just don't want this to be just a few, two, three points and, and go away, Lord. We submit ourselves to you right now. Young people, can I just encourage you to just pray with me and say, Lord, I submit, I surrender myself right now, tonight, to you, so that you will help me to live a life of honor, that I may be known as a man and a woman of character. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Right, so guys, in conclusion, it should be an honor to honor another person. Amen.